Hey everyone, I am going to be cutting up and cooking some butternut squash today to make a puree. Uh, you can use butternut puree to make uh, pumpkin pies or lots of other dishes. You want to lay your butternut squash on a cutting board and take a sharp knife, a chef's knife or something similar that works pretty well. Carefully put your knife through the center of your squash. And then slowly bring them down, trying to cut it in half, or close to half as good as this one's going a little wonky. And turn it around and go back the other way. It's working here. Way towards the end. All the seeds in a butternut squash are located in the bottom half of your squash. So you just want to take a spoon and scoop these out. You can save these if they're heirloom seeds to grow next year, or you can boil and salt and roast these, just like pumpkin seeds, if you like to eat those. You want to just scrape out as much of the stringy part as you can from where the seeds were attached. It's pretty good. Now, I'm just going to place these upside down in a roasting tray or a baking tray. Now, I'm going to add about three cups of water to the pan. This will just help to keep it from sticking while it's roasting. Okay, now, I've got my two butternut squashes in my roaster. And I'm just going to cover this now with the lid. If you were using a baking sheet or something else, and just cover it up with foil to help it from overcooking and put them in the oven at about 350 and it'll take about 45 minutes for these to cook through. Okay, our squash has been in the oven for 45 minutes now and it's done and the way you can tell your squash is done is to take a fork and just press it through and if it goes through really easy you know that that's nice and tender. So just set it aside and let it cool until it's easy enough to handle. Okay, it's been about 10-15 minutes or so and the squash is cool enough to easily handle now. So as you can see, you know, it's a nice color and because we roasted it upside down, you don't have a dry film on the top of this, which if you were cooking to serve for supper would be nice, but if you want to make a soft puree, you, you don't want that. So I'm just going to take a spoon and start scooping this out into my food processor. You can use a blender if you don't have this. And in a pinch, you could probably mash this with a potato masher as well. It'd take a little longer that way, but it should work. And you just want to puree this.
Okay, I've finished pureeing our squash now, and I've got about five to six cups of puree ready to go. Normally what I would do at this point is freeze it in two cup portions, because the majority of recipes I find use about two cups of squash puree. Or I would spread it out on my dehydrator trays and dehydrate it so it would be ready to use later. Now, being that this is our Thanksgiving weekend coming up, I'm going to be using this to bake pies tomorrow. So I'm just going to tuck this into the fridge. I will cover this up with some plastic wrap and tuck it into the fridge until tomorrow. I will be doing some other videos showing how to dehydrate squash as well as some other squash recipes since I have about two good sized boxes of butternut squash to work through. So I hope to have those up shortly, maybe in the next week or so. Okay, take care everyone.